Hello friends, welcome back to another video tutorial. In this section, I am going to share about the topic on in what ways are human exposed to nanoparticles. Okay, let's start. Basically, nanomaterials load a broad class of material which has at least one dimension less than 100 nanometer in size. Okay, so depending on their shape, they can be classified into 0D, 1D, or 2D, or 3D material. So this, the importance of this uh, nanomaterial was realized when it was found that the size can influence the physiochemical properties of the substances. So because of these um, different uh, physiochemical properties, this material that is nanoparticles which are widely used in different applications like biomedical, environmental, agriculture and industrial based applications. Okay, so in the same time we have to think whether these nanoparticles make any risk to human beings or uh, environment. Okay, so the nanoparticles uh, itself uh, make any risk but it is only certain aspect that can make them risky so in particularly their mobility and their increased reactivity so only if any certain properties of certain nanoparticles were uh, proved that that is uh, harmful to the living organism and the environment so in this section i am discussing more about in what ways um, are human exposed to nanoparticles okay the main source of uh, human exposure to nanoparticles uh, during the synthesis of nanomaterial from laboratories and Nano, uh, during the manufacture of uh, nano waste products, that time these free form of nanoparticles can be released in the air or water, and uh, during the uh, production time, this waste pro by product of the production, uh, which also accumulated in the soil or water or plant life. Okay, so likewise uh, the human get exposed to nanoparticles okay so uh, these nanoparticles uh, enter into the living organism by three major route that is first one is through skin another one is uh, respiratory system another one is the dietary system so these are the important route of nanoparticle exposure so uh, the first one is the respiratory system okay the respiratory system uh, which uh, consists of two main part that is upper airway and lower airway so in this uh, na nanoparticle which is suspended in the air this particle become in the form of aerosol so the behavior of this aerosol will depend on the uh, size of the particles okay so uh, that also determine the mode of deposition of the particles okay so the nanoparticle once uh, enter into the respiratory tract uh, it will uh, deposited in the respiratory tract so that um, part region is divided into three major regions that is nasopharyngeal that is upper airway another is tracheobronchial uh, region another is alveolar region so the many researchers are uh, done many uh, reports in that they the predicted model uh, they predicted different models so in that they concluded this um, that the smaller the particles uh, they are more likely to stick or deposit on the respiratory tract and whereas uh, the particle um, which are uh, smaller than 5 nanometer that will deposit in nasopharyngeal region 
and the particle bigger than 5 nanometer uh, that deposited uh, in the alveolar region so the maximum alveolar deposition that is in the range from 50 to 60 percentage uh, is predicted for 20 nanometer particles okay so uh, uh, so in this respiratory system itself there are different clearance mechanisms are there that is the that is the capa capacity of the respiratory lungs to eliminate the um, soil material like so there are two uh, different types of mechanism is there one is chemical clearance another is physical clearance translocation of the particles so in the chemical clearance which involve the dissolve uh, which uh, dissolve the either the particle or its soluble component okay likewise it clear the uh, material and in the physical translocation mechanism which are more specific than the chemical clearance so in that uh, two main clearance mechanisms are there one is uh, mucociliary escalator so in that this um, uh, it will uh, it happen in the na nasal mucous membrane and the tracheobronchial region so where the ciliated epithelial cells and the mucus uh, secreting cells and which are responsible for these um, mucociliary escalatory uh, escalator function so which allow the migration of a lining of mucus towards the pharynx so this is a very fast clearance mechanism uh, for solid particles okay so which eliminate these um, particles uh, from tracheobronchial region in just 24 hours okay so in another one clearance mechanism is phagocytosis by alveolar macrophages so this is one of the um, effective clearance mechanism so it will happen in, in the alveolar region so which uh, involve the macro alveolar macrophages that internalize the particle by phagocytosis okay uh, so these are the um, clearance mechanism in the respiratory uh, lungs and the efficiency of this clearance system uh, which depend upon the size of the particle so which is uh, in the case of uh, micro micrometric particle this is fine but in the case of nanoparticle um, we, um, we cannot uh, say that this nanoparticle are also cleared by this kind of mechanism okay Okay, next is a uh, cutaneous road that is skin uh, which protect the against all form of environmental aggression and hence potentially against nanoparticle also okay so the skin has uh, the structure we can see in the figure so in this uh, three major layer the epidermis dermis and the hypodermis Okay, the epidermis is the outermost layer of the skin and thus form the first physical barrier to the environmental assault and it uh, divides into four sublayers: stratum corneum, stratum granulosum, malpighian layer and the basal layer. Okay, next is the dermal, uh, dermis, so this is just beneath the epidermis, it, uh, it is uh, 10 to 40 times thicker than the uh, epidermis okay so next is hypodermis this is the lowest lowermost uh, layer of the skin and uh, it attaches to the overlying dermis by elastin and collagen fibers okay so there are uh, many uh, researchers that uh, uh, did many uh, investigation of uh, how the nanoparticle is penetrated to, through this uh, derm dermal road so one of the researchers they evaluate the penetration of titanium dioxide nanoparticle which have size ranges less than 100 nanometer so uh, that they determine these particles are located only on the skin surface on that is in the uh, layer of stratum corneum okay so um, and they uh, below the means um, they are 
also reported that after long time uh, exposure they they can these nanoparticles uh, not move to the deeper layer so uh, additionally they uh, also found that uh, the penetration of nanoparticles may also uh, into the of hair follicle so okay next is the digestive root the digestive system is the potential entry root for the nanoparticle there are in these three ways this nanoparticle can enter into the digestive tract one is this organism uh, had this contaminated food stuff or water which contain nanoparticle another is oral exposure may also occur by hands to mouth transfer another is the inhaled nanoparticle which have been eliminated from the respiratory system by microciliary clearance so once this um, nanoparticle enter into the digestive system it will uh, enter into the intestine so where the um, a nutrient absorption will occur so um, uh, that is the finger shaped fold uh, from which is um, there in the uh, wall of the intestine that is villi so which cover the intestine uh, wall or uh, intestine wall so uh, in further uh, increased by the presence of microvilli at the uh, Enterocytes, which con, which consist of most abundant cell types in the intestine mucosa. So, uh, in this picture, we can see uh, one special um, epithelial uh, cell, that is M cell, which is uh, present in between the uh, microvilli and enterocytes. So that are responsible for the um, that are the main route for nanoparticles because they have a great capacity for uh, transcytosis and can transport wide range of material which including nanoparticle also. So it is generally accepted that the particle of size which is less than one micrometer have and has phagocytes uh, phagocytes by this M cell and then transported to the basal region okay so here this um, in this this m cell which are responsible for the um, nanoparticle absorption okay so this is why um, this is the way this nanoparticle enter into the uh, digestive system um, and then to um, blood circulation so once the, if any of these um, uh, root that is the respiratory or epidermic or uh, digestive means intestinal barrier um, this nanoparticle uh, cross this uh, any of this respiratory or epidermic barrier then it enter into the bloodstream okay Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this tutorial, please share with your friends and contacts. Thank you.